so welcome students in this lecture i will discuss two very important theorems that we will be using further in our course so first theorem is this theorem this will be used to show any number equal to 0 so if a belongs to r it says that If a belongs to R, it says that 0 is less than equal to a is less than epsilon for every epsilon greater than 0, then our a is equal to 0. So this theorem will be used in lot of place. So whenever we want to show some number is less than 0 or oh, some number is equal to 0, so what we will do, we will take any arbitrary epsilon greater than 0 and we will show that the given number is always less than epsilon and then using this theorem we can directly say that the number is equal to 0. So let us see the proof of this theorem. The proof is very simple. So we will use the contrapositive approach. Suppose A is not equal to 0 and since we are given that a is equal is greater than equal to 0 so and now we are assuming that a is not equal to 0 so this implies so then a is greater than 0 and now we, what we will do we will choose choose epsilon not equal to 1 by 2 of a and then since we have chose a greater than 0, so epsilon naught is also greater than 0. So this technique that whenever we choose some, we take something greater than 0, then we can always choose our epsilon equal to half of that number and that will also be greater than 0. So choosing this epsilon naught will give us the contradiction to our assumption that a is not equal to 0. So we choose epsilon not equal to 1 by 2 of a. Now, by hypothesis, what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is that a is less than epsilon for every epsilon greater than 0. So, in particular for epsilon not. By hypothesis, a is less than epsilon not. That is, a is less than 1 by 2 of a. And this implies 1 is less than 1 by 2 which is a contradiction so which is a contradiction hence our assumption and our assumption that a is not equal to 0 is wrong so this is hence a is equal to 0 so note so we use this theorem when we want to prove some number m to be equal to 0. So what we will do? We take any arbitrary epsilon greater than 0 and somehow we show that this m is less than epsilon then using the theorem we say that m is 0 so this is how we will be using this theorem so this will be this technique will be used at a lot of places so what we will do whenever we want to show some number m to be equal to 0 we will take any arbitrary epsilon greater than 0 and somehow we will show that 
this number m is less than the chosen epsilon and then using the theorem we can directly say that m is equal to 0. So this technique will be used at lot of places. So this is the one theorem that we will be using a lot in this semester. Then another theorem is Archimedean. Archimedean property. So what this theorem says if we if x belonging to R is any real number then there exists nx so nx belonging to n so there exists a positive integer n such that x is less than equal to nx so whenever we have some x belonging to us some any real number then we will always be able to find a positive integer n such that x is always less than equal to nx. So suppose we are given x equal to 5.7 then you will say that n equal to 6 will work. n equal to 7 will also work, n equal to 8 will also work but there exists at least one. Then if we take x equal to 17.8 then you will say that n equal to 18 or 19 or something will work. Similarly, if I will take x equal to 99999.81, then you will say that n equal to 9999999 can work. So, so given any real number x, we will always be able to find a positive real number n such that x is less than equal to nx. So this, this basic property of real number is called Archimedean property and this is very important tool and is used in lot of theorems. We will be using this property extensively to prove a lot of theorems. So let us see the proof of this theorem, how this is proved. So we use the order completeness property of natural numbers in the proof of this theorem. So first let us see the properties of natural before proceeding. The property of natural is if first is 1 belongs to n and second if n belongs to n then n plus 1 belongs to n. So this is the axioms of natural numbers or this is how natural numbers is defined that 1 belongs to n and if n belongs to n then n plus 1 belongs to n. So, so in this way all the natural numbers are defined. So since 1 belongs to n then by second property you can say 1 plus 1 which is 2 belongs to n now 2 belongs to n then again using second property you will say 2 plus 1 which is 3 belongs to n. So in this way you will be able to prove that every natural number is in this set. So this is the property of naturals. Then another is completeness property of naturals. So what does this say? That any non-empty set of set of any non-empty subset of any non-empty subset of naturals that is bounded above has a maximum element or has a supremum so this is the order pro or completeness order completeness property of naturals so we will be using these two properties in our proof of archimedean 
property. So let us see the proof of Archimedean property. So what? So let's see the proof. So we have to show that if x belongs to R, then there exists a positive natural number, the positive integer n belonging to n such that x is less than or equal to n x. So suppose this is not true. That is every natural number that is then n is less than or equal to x for all n belonging to n. So suppose this is not true then because we have we, we have assumed that there is, does not exist any natural number n which is greater than x so this implies that all the natural numbers are less than or equal to x and this implies that x is an upper bound of n. Now since n is non-empty and it is bounded above is bounded above so by order completeness property by completeness property of n there exists by completeness property of n n has a supremum say So this n has a supremum say u. So u is an upper bound of n and u is a least upper bound of n. Okay. So u is a least upper bound of n. So since u is least upper bound of n, so this implies u minus 1 is not an upper bound of n and this implies there exists m belonging to n such that u minus 1 is less than m and this implies u is less than m plus 1. Now m belongs belonging to n implies m plus 1 belongs to n and u is less than m plus 1. Contradiction to the fact that U is an upper bound of N. Now, what we have done is we have taken U to be a least upper bound of N. Least upper bound means every natural number is less than or equal to U. Then we are saying that u minus 1 is not an upper bound of n because u is least upper bound, so that implies something smaller than u cannot be an upper bound of n, so u minus 1 is not an upper bound of n. And this implies that n must have some element greater than u minus 1. So there exists m belonging to n such that u minus 1 is less than m, and this implies that u is less than m plus 1. Now m belongs to n so that implies m plus 1 belongs to n by the property of natural numbers now u is an upper bound of n but u is smaller than an element of n so which is a contradiction so our assumption hence our assumption that there does not exist any n belonging to n such that 
n is less than equal such that x is less than equal to n is wrong thus there exists some nx belonging to n such that x is less than equal to nx so this proves the hence the proof of archimedean property so this is a nice and simple proof where we are using the two properties of natural numbers first that if n belongs to n then m n plus 1 belongs to n and second property is the completeness property of natural numbers so we are just using these two properties of natural numbers to prove the archimedean property now this version of archimedean property we don't use in general we use the another another version of archimedean property another version of so this version we use a lot some books they write it as corollary but it is just a restatement of archimedean property so theorem it says for each epsilon greater than 0 any real number epsilon greater than 0 there exists n depending on epsilon belonging to n such that is less than epsilon so this property this version of archimedean property is used a lot it is used almost in most of the proofs of real analysis so let us see the proof of this theorem the proof follows immediately from the last theorem so let epsilon greater than 0 be any real number then 1 by epsilon is also x equal to 1 by epsilon is greater than 0 so by archimedean the last theorem which we proved archimedean property there exist n belonging to n such that x is less than n so in that theorem we have chosen less than equal to but since in this theorem we are we need to prove that it is strict so we will take the strict inequality and why we can assume the inequality to be strict because in the if you will assume that there exists some x less than equal to n then you can take new number n star equal to n plus 1 then you will get the strict inequality so we can use directly strict inequality so there exists x less than n so this implies 1 by epsilon is less than n and this implies 1 by n is less than epsilon so this is the proof so this version of archimedean property is used that is if we choose any epsilon greater than 0 so for each epsilon greater than 0 there exists n belonging to n such that 1 by n is less than epsilon so this property will be used a lot this is archimedean property and it will be used a lot in our syllabus so you must remember this result so we have noted two results in this theorem that if any number is less than epsilon for each epsilon greater than 0 then that number is equal to 0 and if there if for each epsilon greater than 0 we can always find a positive integer n so that 1 by n is less than epsilon in other words this theorem says that if we have any number greater than 0 then i can always find some number of the form 1 by n which lies between 0 and epsilon so this is what this archimedean property says that 
if we have any two num any number greater than zero, then I can always fit up number of the form one by n, which lies between zero and epsilon. So I can always fit a number of this form in between epsilon and zero. So this is what Archimedean property says that I can always fit a number of the form one by n lying between zero and epsilon. So this is what the Archimedean property says. So we can always fit a number of the form 1 by n between 0 and epsilon. So this is the basic idea of Archimedean property then you can that you can always fit a number between 0 and epsilon which is of the form 1 by n.